Hey guys, we're back for another video, and welcome to Hypixel Skyblock, and today I am doing another one of those weird showcase tutorial type videos. Also, I'm recording this at 3 in the morning. Uh, I, the benefits of living by yourself, I guess. Anyway, today we're going to be looking over all of the items in Hypixel Skyblock that are completely outclassed by other items. In other words, never use these items because they're just a waste of time and money and there's better alternatives out there that are more popular anyway let's get right into it so first of all we're going to talk about swords the first of which being the prismarine blade now i'm pretty sure most of you don't need me to tell you that a fishing based sword is probably not going to be that good it's crafted with a stack of prismarine shards and you unlock it after 25 prismarine pretty early game plus 50 damage plus 25 strength deals 200% damage while in the water it's a pretty it's okay I guess but there's not really much of a point I mean sure you could go fishing for 30 minutes and then get one of these or you can farm for five minutes and then head over to the auction house and then search up the silver fang and then you can buy one for like eight to ten thousand coins probably okay maybe twenty thousand coins but you'd literally farm wheat in the hub for like five minutes and you'd have enough coins to purchase a silver fang which is actually a pretty decent weapon let me see if i could try and find here we go just does damage plus 100. all right next up is the golem sword this one is if you go into iron collection you need to get 25,000 iron just to unlock the recipe for the golem sword now again not bad plus 80 damage plus 125 strength iron punch and it's crafted with two enchanted iron blocks it's a decent weapon but it's just not worth it when you compare it to something like the raider axe once maxed out gives plus 115 damage 154 strength so the raider axe is way better way easier to get you get the raider axe by trading it uh from the viking i think it's for like 135,000 coins which i believe is similar in value if not cheaper than two enchanted iron blocks. Let me take a look. Oh yeah, just the price of two enchanted iron blocks is literally double the price of just buying a Raider Axe. Not to mention getting up your foraging and kills with the axe is super easy and it's overall just a better weapon. You get more coins on kill. It's useful in late game if you ever wanna do uh, pearl spamming or maybe even grinding for coins with a uh, hound pet and scavenger on the weapon this next item is actually pretty obscure and i'm fairly certain most of you have not even heard of it and that's the recluse fang this is unlocked in spider slayer and it's relatively early on it gives plus 120 damage plus 30 strength plus 20 percent crit damage and the item ability is squash em, which accumulates strength against spiders you know when you kill them now that's it's okay again all of these things are decent but they're not going to hold up to what replaces them and in this case instead of spending you know a spider sword spider catalyst and a bunch of web it's pretty cheap but i would suggest just using a regular sword against spiders up until you can afford a scorpion foil which gives plus 100 damage plus 100 strength which you know it doesn't give as much damage right off the bat but the uh 70 extra strength really makes a difference and you also deal 250 percent damage against spiders and it is very expensive i'm not gonna sugarcoat it this sword will probably cost you around 7 million coins right about now but you know it's infinitely infinitely more useful now this is the biggest price disparity obviously this you can craft with near nothing like i'm pretty sure it's almost a free sword the recluse fang I don't know. Maybe if you're Spider Slayer 1 and you're getting to Spider Slayer like 4. But it's just it's just not that useful. Next up is the Hurricane Bell. This gives plus 120 damage and plus 50 strength with an item ability called Tempest, which you shoot uh what is it? Shoot five arrows when it's maxed out. This bow is fairly cheap nowadays. It only costs three or a stack and a half of string stack and have enchanted bone but it's really not that useful when you compare it to 
the runans which is actually not that much more expensive it's only double the bones and it uses three stacks of enchanted strength a runans in raw value is around 500k coins if you were to just purchase the materials and craft it yourself if you were to buy from the auction house would be maximum a mil probably more like 700k the thing is with the runans bow it's an investment to save up for runans because if you were to buy a hurricane bow for you know half the material cost in bone and you know a lot less value in string but yeah if you were to purchase a hurricane bow you're wasting your money because you're gonna want to eventually upgrade to a runans and i might even make the case that the magma bow might be a good replacement for the both of them especially in dungeons because if you have a magma cream in your quiver then you get double damage which means it immediately outclasses the both of them and it costs way less only a stack and a half of enchanted magma cream three enchanted string the raw materials are like seventy thousand coins why do people not use the magma bow anyway yeah runans is good i guess with aiming and stuff it's good for eh, it's not that great for slayers actually i would even say to do revs might be best to have the magma bow i don't know the bows are pretty underwhelming in skyblock especially the uh hurricane don't even bother with that speaking of disappointing bows another one is the scorpion bow this one's fairly expensive if we go into the slayer recipes here scorpion bow gives 110 damage and 10 strength by the way 10 strength that's terrible it's crafted with three times 16 tarantula silk this is so expensive it is so expensive for a scorpion bow how much is that that's let me see 32 48 tarantula silk let me just quickly see what that's worth in the ah 3.5 mil to do similar damage yeah you know what hold on this is this might actually be kind of funny so let's go into our recipe book here slayers 110 damage on the scorpion bow 10 strength let's keep that in mind right and then if we go back to the magma bow it has 10 less damage but like but a ton more strength and it does double damage the magma bow is worth like 1 20th the cost of a scorpion bow but it's just better also if you want something that's more powerful and more expensive there's always mosquito bow which is seen as the best bow in the game the thing is it's extremely expensive because it requires twice the it, four times the tarantula silk again not really worth it but hey if you want the absolute best bow in the game this is the obvious choice but the magma bow is a it is a powerful contender i mean that double damage actually would almost compete with mosquito dude it's, it's really good other than the reforge obviously the reforge is going to be better on mosquito bow and then finally there's the slime bow should we go in here collection combat slime ball i don't even have this unlocked because it's such a useless bow plus 100 damage plus 50 percent crit damage doesn't even give you strength its ability is against slimes it's so expensive 15 enchanted slime blocks i mean bruh two mil for a bow that is worse than magma bow even without the magma cream in your quiver i'm pretty sure okay so moving on from weapons we're gonna go to armor zombie armor and revenant armor so zombie armor all you need to know is it's what's required to craft rev armor as you can see right here and it's extremely expensive by the way the chest plate requires four zombie hearts now if i'm aware the other recipes aren't that bad oh you don't even need the zombie armor for the rest of this just for the chest plate but anyway zombie armor is actually pretty stupid it's pretty bad same with rev its ability gives you more defense against zombies which is great and all until you remember that the revenant falchion or the reaper falchion is a thing the reason why reaper falchion outclasses the zombie and rev armor is because of lifesteal this weapon shreds through zombies like absolutely shreds through them and if you have lifesteal especially lifesteal 4 on that sword you're going to regen health so fast that it doesn't even matter if you take a ton of damage 
from a ref like it the defense does not matter you will just eliminate it instantaneously get all your health back every hit it will be a breeze not to mention you won't be dragging the fight on for like 10 minutes you'll get it done in like three to ten seconds if you're really good at it now this is probably the most obvious case of an item that's completely outclassed in high pixel skyblock and that is the speedster armor this set is crafted with 24 enchanted sugarcane which i don't need to tell you is pretty dang expensive that's almost two mil for a set that only gives you 20 speed is a full set bonus that's so bad and it gives you 60 speed between the whole set 80 speed total just for having it i'm wearing farmer boots right now and i'm at 329 percent speed and i'm at almost farming 50 but like these boots cost near nothing and i'm i'm getting a speed bonus right now of 192 is more than double what you get from speedster armor and they're uncommon boots it's actually terrible and you know i didn't have to pay two mil for them so farmer boots could outclass you know speedster if you have a high farming level but if you don't there's always young dragon armor now this is a bit expensive 240 of this it's about the same price actually so yeah young dragon armor the full set it gives you more speed than speedster armor so if i were to swap these pieces out here go boom and boom full so i get 277 percent speed and then once i get a god splash then i can be at 500 percent speed which is something you can't even do with any other set in the game you can get 500 percent speed because the item ability is actually useful here it increases your maximum speed yeah plus 100 walk speed cap so, yeah, Young Armor completely outclasses Speedster. All right, here's another one that's fairly obvious, and that's Ember Armor versus Ender Armor. Uh, so let's go take a look. I don't even own an Ember set, so let's quickly take a look. Obsidian will be created below you when walking on lava, so basically Frostwalker for lava. Also increases the chance of Nether Monsters dropping an item by 20%, pretty much useless. Wearing this full set will also prevent you from taking lava and fire damage. But why? It doesn't have any full set bonus that really helps you in any way, because let's be real, when you have the Lava Talisman, you don't, you don't take lava damage. Nether Monsters dropping more items, useless, literally useless, unless they add another Nether Island, I guess. And you only get 40 hp per piece whereas if you go to ender armor this is far more useful so it gives you slightly less hp but more defense also it doubles all stats on the armor piece when on the end island far more useful because the end is a much higher level place and that includes reforges that includes enchantments it's very good it is very powerful i actually made a whole video explaining how ender armor is in probably the top three armor sets in the entire game for effective max hp if you abuse mathematics with you know a blaze pet and hot potato books it's insane you should watch it uh, link in the top right hand corner okay the next example is the magma armor so it's like the ember armor but slightly better so if we go into magma full set bonus absorb every 10 magma cubes killed gives the wearer plus one health and intelligence so this used to be the go-to armor piece for maximum intelligence obviously that is not the case anymore it's been like 10 months and nowadays we have wise armor which gives you way more the full set bonus of wise reduces the cost of abilities by about 30 percent but on top of that you just get a ton more mana i mean look at this you get plus 250 intelligence on the helmet for having wise reforge because it's a legendary armor piece like you get 75 off the bat or right off the bat on the chest plate and you get a plus 125 from the wise reforge infinitely better getting wise dragon if you're gonna go for intelligence magma is just just bad and also if you want to make the argument that magma armor is cheaper than wise armor just remember the fact that like when you're going for cheap armor for mana you know you're gonna have issues because you don't even really need any magic damage until you're in the late game so yeah
Something that people didn't even know existed in Hypixel Skyblock was the cactus armor. It's a common armor set. It has a deflect thing which rebounds 33% of the damage you take back to your enemy, which I guess is cool until you remember that, you know, thorns exists. Okay, so back to the Slayer items. There's actually an armor set called Armor of the Pack, which is probably one of the weirdest armor sets in this entire game. So its full set bonus gives you 35 strength and 80 defense for each person within like 30 blocks of you that's wearing it. So a maximum of three players. So the full set bonus can give you a maximum of like 105 strength and 240 defense, which sounds good until you remember that the armor set's actually pretty bad to begin with. Defense against animals and true defense is cool, I guess but you need three people to be near you that are also wearing this armor also it's extremely expensive do you guys know how much enchanted mutton goes for right now but i don't know i would say you're better off with mastiff which just gives you like if you have the proper talisman reforges like forty thousand effective max hp as opposed to this which might equal that but only if you have two other players helping you which let's be honest, people don't do Slayers together. And Wolf Slayer is not really difficult enough to really warrant this. I don't know, this one's a hard maybe. I would say maybe after the Slayer update, like V2, maybe this will be needed, but for right now it's pretty useless. Oh, and finally, Golem Armor. Decent health, decent defense, pretty early game. You get absorption every 20 seconds when you kill an enemy pretty meh literally any dungeon set will be better than that and you can get them for near nothing in the auction house right now so if i were to look up skeleton grunt right now it's a fairly common armor set in dungeons so if we go to ending soon 2,000 coins for a helmet 1,000 coins for a chest plate all the base stats of this armor is immediately better than actually a lot of the arm armors that i said earlier some of these could actually give some pretty decent stats and they go for near nothing. So I don't know, might be worth looking into. Miner's Outfit, which you can find in the Cobble Collection, is a neat little early game set that gives you haste too while you're wearing it. But you, you know, it takes over all your armor slots and maybe you don't like that. Well, it turns out there's actually a super cheap pet you can get for less than a million coins legendary, probably more along the lines of 300k coins. And that's the silverfish pet. Mine is epic because I'm using it to level pets, but let's quickly look in the AH. There you go. As you can see, uh, dexterity is a perk for the legendary rarity. It gives permanent haste three. So you're just taking up your pet slot to get haste three, which is immediately better than haste two. And again, it costs like less than a mil. The miner's outfit is still helpful if you're early game, but if you're like, if you've been playing for more than like a week, it'd be time to upgrade. Okay, so that's it for armors that have been outclassed completely. Now we're gonna go into, I would say just the miscellaneous category. So there's a whole lot of things that are not armor or weapons. And they're actually fairly interesting because I feel like a lot of these people didn't even know existed. If you go into wheat collection, there is such an item called enchanted bread. Increases the speed of your minion by 5% for 12 hours. This is what super compactors default to in minions, like wheat minions. It blows my mind because it's actually useless. Same goes for Enchanted Cult. Increase the speed of your minion by 10% for 24 hours. Slightly better, but still pretty terrible. The replacement for the both of these. Enchanted Charcoal. Increases the speed of your minion by 20% for 36 hours. Now this is good. It is very close to the speed you get from an Enchanted Lava Bucket, except it costs like near nothing. Enchanted Charcoal, you could actually find in the bazaar if you wanted to just buy it in bulk. A stack of it is only 120k, and that will keep 24 minions running for like three days. So that's pretty dang good. And then by that time, the minions will literally make enough money to afford lava buckets. So like, yeah, just get enchanted charcoal. Don't bother with any of the early game fuels. They're just not worth it. Oh, and here's another one I talked about in a previous video of mine, and that is the solar panel, which is the worst version of 
an enchanted lava bucket. So we're, we got the minion theme going on here. Increases the speed of your minion by 25% during the day, unlimited duration. But what that doesn't mention, what well, does mention is during the day. During the night, it doesn't give any bonus. So in reality, you're only getting like a 12.5% increase in efficiency, which is even worse than again, enchanted charcoal. Just stick with that until you can afford a lava bucket. Trust me, this is the go-to permanent fuel source for minions. Just don't bother. It completely outclasses solar panels. Okay, this is a little bit of a controversial one. Flying fish is seen by a lot of people as the best fishing pet because of the... It's a quick reel, that's what it is. Mine's only level one, so I can't really show, but it increases your fishing speed, right? So if we were to go in here... So the best I could find is a level 86 in the auction house gives a 12.9% increase in fishing speed. That's kind of cool until you remember that the dolphin pet exists. Uh, mine's only a rare and it's level 56, but as you can see, increases your fishing speed by 2.2% for each player within 10 blocks, up to 20%. So immediately I get more fishing speed just like that and it gives you sea creature catch chance. What more can you ask for? Dolphin pets easily better and it's only at rare rarity and it's already better. So yeah, just don't even bother with flying fish. If you get one, I guess keep it, but don't buy one from the auction house unless you're trying to get pet score. Cause like this is the dolphin pets, obviously the best way to go. Oh yeah. So if you guys remember back in the day, in order to get your island to have no mobs on it, you would have to use a nether biome stick and give it to Jerry to set your entire biome, your entire island's biome to hell. Because once you do that, only chickens will spawn, no hostile mobs. But recently, they added an item to the game called the Repelling Candle. We'll make it so no mobs will spawn at all on your island. You craft it in the Acacia Collection for six enchanted acacia when I'm one enchanted coal. 100% worth it. Don't need to change the biome to nether on your island. And this guy will just make it so mobs don't spawn and bother you. It's great. Oh yeah, does anyone remember the portals that were in this game? Yeah, remember these things? They're completely outclassed by the fast travel menu, which I'm using Skyblock add-on so I can go to any of these places, not just the four specified on my island. But also, even without this, there's slash visit portal hub. Uh -huh. And if I wanted to go to the end, boom, it ends right here. So yeah, you don't need portals on your island. Portal hub's free. The scrolls are not free, but they're really cheap and it's way more convenient and you don't have to go to your island first to travel places. So yeah. Another one's the saving grace. So this item's actually extremely expensive. You find an ender pro collection and 50,000. Safety teleports you back to your previous island when you or your private island when you're about to die. This item will be consumed on use. That's a lot of pearls, but it's not really that expensive. But the real price is the enchanted golden apples, which will cost you. But this item sucks because it doesn't save your potions. It doesn't save your coins. It counts as a death. It's bugged right now. Even if it wasn't bugged, it's still extremely expensive. And again, the most difficult area in this game right now, other than a dungeon, is the end island. And there's an item called the Remnant of the Eye. It goes for about 200k coins in the shop here, but you can get them basically free if you ask anybody that does dragons to give you like they'll be happy to give you a double chest full of these things because they're basically junk you can't sell them in the auction house you can't sell them at an npc it's literally they're worth nothing and they actually work also the piggy bank exists this will save your coins so here's a quick one and it's to do with fishing again uh, if you want a relatively fast fishing rod, it might take a while to get to 500 salmon collection just to get the speedster rod, which gives you a 30% increased speed in fishing. But what if I told you it'd actually be better just to go into clay collection here and get the farmer rod, which, you know, 2.5k clay is a lot more hard to get, but that's why you put down a clay minion. But the farmer rod gives you 40% increased fishing speed. So boom. I don't know, I'd just skip, so I'd skip to something like, I don't know, maybe a challenging rod. There's such an item as the Hunter Talisman, which gives you a 2% combat XP buff from monster kills. 
it costs a ton of money. That is a stack of golden teeth. That is not an exaggeration, a literal stack of golden teeth, which if you don't remember how much that's worth, worth almost five and a half million coins. Now you might be asking yourself, well, it's a talisman, right? So of course it's gotta be worth it. No, no, it is not. Because if you go in the recipe book, Slayers, you have the hunter ring, which is an upgrade of the hunter talisman, or so you would think. These two talismans don't stack. If you have a hunter ring, the hunter talisman won't work, but it's crafted with a, it says rename me, but this is supposed to be a, a grizzly bait. Okay. But anyway, it's crafted with a grizzly bait instead of a hunter talisman. So in other words, the hunter talisman cannot be upgraded to the ring, which means you've wasted 64 golden teeth for no reason. Okay, this one's a fairly obvious one, but I guess I might as well drive the point home here. Wands are terrible. As you can see, I have a wand of mending here, which has an 80 mana cost, which is pretty freaking high, which heals 30 hearts for seven seconds. That's really bad. <laughs> it costs 80 mana. Meanwhile, if I were to have a mana flux power orb right here, it costs half my mana, which would actually be about 200 and something right now, which is significantly more than the wand. But you have to remember, right? Look at the HP per second. It heals, and I have no armor on. It heals double the amount that the Wand of Mending does, and I have no armor on. If I were to put Superior on right now, look at how much I heal per second in full Superior. 95 HP, triple the amount that the Wand of Mending does. And the Mana Flux Power Orb gives me more mana. As you can see, my mana is already at max again, and the mana flux still has 15 seconds. And if you want something to top up your healing in a second, there's always the zombie sword, which gives you 144 health, which is, you know, four times the amount that the wand gives you, plus 5% of your max HP. And he heals other players. All right, so for this demonstration, I've actually gathered a bunch of stuff. I got myself a jungle axe with efficiency five, telekinesis one, as well as a golden axe with efficiency five, telekinesis one. Now, in this example, I'm gonna make the case that the jungle axe is actually inferior to the golden axe. Now, how does that make any sense? The jungle axe is a special item crafted with three enchanted jungle wood and takes quite a lot of collection, whereas a golden axe you can craft right away. So if I drink a haste three potion, you'll see real quick why the jungle axe is completely outclassed by the cheaper and easier to get golden axe. So here we go, boom. This is about as fast as you can go with a jungle axe. Here we go. Look at how much faster this is. It is so much faster than a jungle axe. It's actually terrible. Don't even bother. Do not even bother with the jungle axe. Unless you intend to upgrade it later to a tree capitator, which costs about 2 million coins at this stage in the game. And the tree capitator is better than all of them. As you can see, this is a tree capitator with efficiency 5 telekinesis 1. And it has the effect of both. You can not only insta chop logs, but it also has the same effect as the jungle axe, but like three or four times better. Also, if you were to get a monkey pet on top of all of that, then the cooldown would be reduced, which makes it even better. Okay, so this is a little bit of a controversial one. I'm gonna make the case that the cobblestone minion is completely useless, and the only reason why you should have one is to unlock it for unique minion crafts. So I would make the claim, right? Immediately remove your cobblestone minions, and instead of having one placed, you should build yourself one of these. This is a cobblestone generator that uh, was designed by Giovanni, I believe. And the idea is you were to grab a stonk or, you know, efficiency five golden axe with haste and haste three, you run through here. And the way it works is there's lava source blocks all the way around on that side, water source blocks all the way on this side. I don't think they need to be source blocks. I think it's just water on the top. And there's uh, what is it? Five blocks of cobble going up and there's teleport pads. One there that teleports to here and then it keeps going forward constantly. And this will get you cobblestone collection way faster than a minion. You barely have to pay attention. You just got to wiggle your mouse. And especially now with the sack update and the uh, personal compactor update, 
it's not going to fill your inventory you barely have to pay attention and yeah get your cobblestone collection up to as high as it needs to be perhaps all the way through the collection i mean if you were going to go here 70,000 cobblestone collected is easily achievable by hand using a farm like this so don't even waste your time having cobblestone minions placed on your island like seriously build one of these things it'll save you so much time you can have a more valuable minion down maybe get some coins with snow maybe get your accessory bag up or accessory bag size up with redstone something along those lines that you just don't need to have cobblestone down Oh, and the final one, which is actually kind of funny. This is a detail that went unknown basically for months. No one even thought about this. It's not helpful in any way in the game, but I find it very interesting. So the Eternal Crystal is a talisman that used to be in Quartz Collection. And the way it worked is you would craft it from the Night Crystal and the Day Crystal together. And it would produce an epic rarity talisman that gives you strength and defense during the day and night. Now the talisman was removed from the game, but let's assume it's still in. Well, it is technically still in the game. There's uh, one person that has it. But anyway, the talisman, the eternal crystal is actually worse than having a day crystal and a night crystal because first of all all three of them don't stack if you have a eternal crystal the day and night crystal don't work so what you've basically done is you've gotten an epic talisman that overwrites two rare talismans which means overall your reforges are worse so think about that for a second if someone were to be able to get the fabled eternal crystal they would be screwing their stats well anyway that's it for this video guys this is the latest i've ever recorded a hypixel skyblock video it is now 3 33 in the morning what the hell am i doing with my life those were all of the items that could be completely outclassed in hypixel skyblock Let's hope you make smart financial decisions and get the replacement for all these items, as I said in the video. And uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Also, you know, a BLC cape. Link in the pinned comment. Look at that beautiful code. Anyway, <laughs> I guess that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys later.